Hello, wonderful people. Welcome to another amazing episode of our Python tutorial series. And in the last episode, we're looking at how to estimate the consecutive word days and then consecutive dry days. We're giving a sample data, which is in the form of a list. This time, just as we promised in the very last tutorial video that we're going to advance it onto more tabular data in the sense of having data structured out as, um, let's say, a form of more two-dimensional structure, or let's say, data in the form of rows and columns. So this can be an Excel spreadsheet, um, a CSV format, .txt format, and you're working with the data. All right. So what we want to do first is um, we want to use the pandas uh, package. OK, and so we import pandas and then we indicate as PD, just as you know, default um, or standard procedure for naming the packages we import. So we import pandas and then we import that as PD. And then also from Padlib, we make use of the path method. So we import path method from the Padlib recipe. And in the second column, everything stays intact. So this is exactly what we developed from the very um, last, I mean, the last tutorial session. So if you probably have any question, you can also um, visit, you know, head back to our channel and then visit the last tutorial. I would also link it up in the description box and also it will definitely be indicated above the video. And so you would want to check back and then get to understand what we are doing in there first. And you come back and then complete this. All right, so there's a function we'll be making use of. Now, the next thing we want to do is call our data. So um, let me just pass in here data equals to I've imported the pandas of PD. So PD dot um, read Excel. That's what I'm reading from, uh, from the Excel spreadsheet. Um, Okay, so and I make use of the path, all right, and then I make reference to the path will actually work as though I'm working on my normal terminal. Let's say if you're working with your Linux, the way the terminal would, you know, allow you to access certain directories and subdirectories and so on and so forth as the same way. So bring for data. Luckily, we have the data directly in the same location as the script, so we don't need to then indicate all the sub directories. Okay, so let's run this and when it's done, we can see what the data contains and then we know what to do. Okay, so let's see just the head of the data. Um say first 10 rows. And so that's it. It contains data from different stations and these are actually daily data, say from 1991, January 1st, 2nd, 3rd, on and on. And these are the various um Synoptic stations. These are just sample data from um, synoptic stations. So we can actually make use of that. Yes. So what we would want to do is to um, let me check the tail of the data. And um, okay, so this actually ends in 2020. All right. So one thing I would like to be sure of is just check the column 60, I mean the row 60 of the data. Okay, okay, there's for March, 1st March, so, um, okay, 1991, so let me check 59, so we saw they've not, okay, yeah, exactly, so we have this issue here. So the data has not dealt with, I think it was, the way it was structured, it was probably, transpose later and so columns of 29th February, which would only have data for leap years, but then the other portions which are not leap years would have the row filled with certain missing um, values. In this case, the uh, negative 9988. All right, so we'll have to deal with this. Um, we'll deal with that shortly. Let's see what the error would be first before we try to deal with that. Okay, so. Let's say I try to create um, with this data that we have. I want to create the index. I don't make use of the year, month, and day because I mean we've not dealt with the 29th. I just decide to create a column called date and make use of the pandas date range. 
right? And then I indicate my starting year, in this case, in 1991, and then my ending period, 2020. If I want to be exact, 2020, December 31st, I indicate the frequency that there should be a daily date range. Now, this produces an error because it is the length of the values I'm having actually um, they don't they do not match the index that is from the data so what we are creating now is lesser than the ones that are contained in the actual data because of the issues of the 29 February's that have not been dealt with so we need to handle that part first and so what we would want to do is to first um Want to do some replacement. So, first, would before this end, you can actually call the data and make use of the where method. Okay, so data dot where. Right. And we notice that all the 29 actually have missing um, representation of missing data of minus 9980. Okay, so in actual sense, I can I'd rather make use of the replace. The where would have come if I'm um, subsetting the data, so I make use of the replace. And then I'm going to replace the negative 9988 with the np.none, which is from NumPy. So um, because NumPy is not imported, I have to import the NumPy here before we get an error. So import NumPy as np. And like I always would prefer, I'd rather keep that as part of the import. So over here, and that's what we have. So now we can replace without any error. Okay, I want to replace that. I mean, we'll have to save it back to the data. Okay, and I would want to see what the data contains this time. Okay. All right, so we have this whole point to replace. So let's go back to the ILOC of um, 59 and see. So yeah, so it changes everything to none. And the reason why we did this is because we can easily drop the nands, all right? So using the drop any. So after replacing, I would want to now include drop an A, which is to drop the nands, all right? So by this, the 59 actually changes to match. That means no longer do we have the 29s, I mean, the 29 February's with the missing data in there, they are taken out, all right? And so once we have done that, we can, successfully now make use of our date range and create a date range suit and pass that as the date, all right? And what we would also want to do is, um, after running this, let's see what the data now contains. We have a column created as a date. And this time there wasn't any error because we've dealt with the 29 February issue. All right, so the next thing to do is to, we wouldn't want to make use of the year, month, and day, so we can actually drop it. So data dot drop, and then we are dropping this time we let those columns in square brackets so the year the month and then the day all right and we would pass it back to data because if we fail to do that it means it wouldn't replace it all right and what we want to do is to specify the axis because these are on the columns so we specify the axis to be one this arrow represents the row one to be the column so with this, it's easy now to check our data. And we notice that those columns are gone. And what we want to do next is to set the date as the index so that in place of this 0, 1, 2, 3, in that order, it changes to the date instead. So we are going to add to this. We could have done that separately, but let's add it to this part for so set index. And we set the date as the index. 
the minus k sensitive. Okay. Okay, so I have the zero because I've already dropped the year, month, and day, so it doesn't understand. I need to go back and rerun this line. So I pick the default data, and then when I come back here, I run this, I have it working now. Okay, so that is resolved. Bear in mind, once I've dropped this from this cell, and I just make the improvements, because it's trying to find the year, month, and day, and that, that was already dropped, so it wouldn't um, work its identifies that as an error. So you would have to understand what the error terms are and be able to adjust to suit. Okay, so now aside this, the data, we can actually take what the minimum values of the data. Ah, so we also have in here, that's minus 9999 representing missing data. And also the minus 99 being also missing data. Now these are actual missing data, okay? And so um, we would want to replace them. This time we are not gonna drop them because those are actually just data gaps. Okay, so what we want to do is to include over here, we replace the minus 9999 with np.none, okay? And why not, we could also Take the simple way out and then also replace the minus 99 by the np.net. So just as we have. Okay. So I would have to go back because of the same error we encountered at first. All right. And this should work. All right. So all that we are doing hasn't got anything to do with the core of identifying the CWD. These are actually data wrangling we are doing, and that has been featured in some early videos. I'll link the, I'll place the link in the description box and then you can find it for your viewing and then and understand it. All right, so now we get to the part where we are supposed to now apply the function. The function we wrote from the previous tutorial. So we are gonna apply the function this time. All right. And so to apply the function, bear in mind these are on different years. We want to find the CWD and CDD for separate years. So we need to group them. So let's call the data and then we apply the group by function. And by applying the group by, we would want to make use of the pd.grouper. That's a subclass of grouper under the panda. And then we will set the frequency to but I want to do it for every year, so yearly, all right? And after setting that, now I want to apply the function. An easy way to do this is to make use of the transform method, okay? And um, by transform, I'll just pass in the function I want to, it's just like you're trying to transform the data from the way it is into a certain aspect based on certain function. All right, now what I want to use here is, I wouldn't want to just call this directly. What I want to do is to apply the Lambda function, which I would also show, I'll link the, um, I'll place the link to the Lambda tutorial video for your viewing. So we make use of the Lambda function. And by Lambda, we pass in, every input would actually be replaced by a dummy. We make use of a dummy argument here, say um, A. Okay, to represent any item that we can pick from the data and pass in there. And this time we are gonna, by, by the Lambda function, what we were doing at first was maybe I just call Lambda, say X, and then I pass what the function would be, maybe X to the power two, and that's all for the Lambda function. But this time we wanna make the execution path to be the function we've built up there. So instead of having the X to the power two, we are gonna make use of the, function we built. The function in this case was consecutive with inputs of the data itself. So in this case, A, the threshold, so let's say we are estimating at one, the threshold of one, and then this, let's use ZDD as a consecutive ID, all right? And this, 
as the NAV give us a PDD for the various years. So let's name the CDD. So yearly or annual CDD. All right, we run this part. Now let's see what the annual CDD contains. Okay, so it has estimated that CDD as a consecutive dry day for each year. But bear in mind that because we were only transforming, when it computes for each year, it places that same value for every day within that particular year. Okay, so for each station, the CDD we had for a particular year, say 1991, it will be placed. We've not, even though we have the, the 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 grouping we did was only to group them and be able to identify the CDD. But then the data transformation was not sort of, we didn't, uh, after binning them, we didn't average them, we didn't do anything. We only transformed them, all right? So we only transformed the data from what it was to the CDD. So every day would have that particular CDD. And so an easy way to do this or to get a unique value for every year is to just average for that year. And that will give us um, virtually the same thing. So what we want to do is this time we would want to Add, we can actually um, do that on the next line or still add it to this. So we want to resample. You can actually use the group by again. You can use the group by PD dot group by one year and then this time you find the mean. Okay. We can also make use of the resample, which I've explained in the earlier videos. I'll still indicate. So um, let's use the group by again. First, so group by, and we have PD dot group. And we set again the frequency to be one year. And this time when we are done, we add the dot mean to give us the average. And that's all. And this time when we run the annual CDD, we have just individual values for the various years. And so you just have the end of the years shown here. Okay. And that's exactly the same. If I don't make use of the group by that, 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 and then I rather change this whole group by part to say resample instead. And I just specify the resampling period of one year. It should be yearly. It should work the same way. We have the same output. Okay, so resample goodbye, you can use them in, I mean, interchangeably. And that's all. And this purely how we apply the same function or we estimate the CDD, CWD based on the same function we wrote, which is a basic function without using any extra packages. But this time we apply that on the tabular data to give us the, I mean, the various yearly CDDs. And we can do the same for CWD, that's all consecutive wet days. So we just change this to CWD and then that would work for us, okay? And once you're done, let's say a simple thing, we can probably instead of showing it in the tabular form, one will just, visualize for the particular location. So let me use the first station, the ABE, and we can just plot and see what it contains. And this is how it looks like the various CDD for the various years. If I want to plot everything together, why not? I can just call the annual CDD and then just plot. And this time it will show some labels. So if I don't want to, have their labels, I just pass in here legend equals to false, and then I'm done. And that's purely how to estimate the TDD, CWD using a tabular data. This is where we end today's tutorial video. Um, like we always say, there's a big ton of opportunities out there. You can always lay your hands on, but make sure you build the skill first, it's necessary, okay? If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe, turn on post notifications so you get I'm notified whenever we have something new coming up and don't forget to like leave a comment if you have any question ask in the comment section the team will get back to you don't forget to also share within your network and hope to see you on the other side again this time with the next tutorial addressing how to now reapply the same function on a multi-dimensional data preferably a net cdf format data thank you and have a wonderful time bye-bye